Hi and welcome. If you're new, I'm Camille. I'm one of the vocal coaches with 30 Day Singer. Today we're talking about cracking, why we crack, how to prevent voice cracks, um, lots of good stuff. I want to direct your attention quickly to the video description because I have a couple short lessons there related to cracking that I'd love for you to watch later. Um, so those lessons talk about using consonants to avoid vocal cracking. Um, there is two lessons in there that talk about vowel modification to avoid cracking, which we'll also cover today. So let me just give you a quick overview of what to expect. Um, we're gonna talk about why we crack, vowel modification to find vocal balance, consonant substitution or just the usage of consonants in our vocal warm-up to avoid cracks. We'll talk about anticipating cracks before they occur and we'll talk about intentional cracks for stylistic effect. Um, so lots to cover. Uh, before we jump in, can you like this video? It'll help our channel out and uh, if you're not subscribed, be sure to subscribe. I kind of assume if you're here live you're probably subscribed but just throwing that out there. Um, okay, so why do we crack? We crack because there's a lack of coordination, typically, between your chest voice muscles and your head voice muscles. Um, I'm using these terms with quotes around them because some voice teachers don't like those terms, chest voice and head voice, um, but I'll define them very, very quickly. Chest voice or speaking voice is the same thing. So if you say, hey, or you sing, hey, you're using what we call your chest voice function. Um, when you're in chest voice, the muscles within the vocal folds are more responsible. Um, in head voice, you have this other pair of muscles, your cricothyroid muscles that stretch the vocal folds longer and thin them out. So if you go like this, go woo woo then you're using your head voice function. Um, so when we experience a vocal crack, hey, we're going typically from a chest voice function, hey, into a head voice function, um, but we didn't intend to. <laughs> so that's essentially what happens when our voice cracks. Um, another reason uh, that a voice crack can happen is that we have too much weight or too much muscle at the vocal folds. Um, so if you're pushing a lot, if it feels like you're yelling and straining, often that'll lead to cracking because again, there's imbalance. If you're going, hey, you're probably going to crack like I just did. Um, over muscling and uh, anyways, that, that, that'll cause too much muscle tension, you're trying to hold back all of this air and the air has to get through, we experience that as a vocal crack. Um, so let's talk about fixes for both of those issues. And it's okay if you don't know what's causing your vocal cracking. Um, so that first issue, that lack of coordination between your chest voice muscles and your head voice muscles, the big fix here is to develop mixed coordination where you're not just in chest voice or just in head voice, but you're building a bridge between the two. Um, so one exercise I really like is this kind of creaky hum. So if you get a little bit of vocal fry going mm, on a hum, mm, 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 I know it sounds really bizarre, but we can use that over a wide range. Um, so we can start, eh, let's go maybe here. So I'm going to start you at F sharp three and we'll go And then we'll walk up. So we're keeping this mm, creaky sound and everyone's singing in the same octave. So everyone's starting on F sharp. Again, that pattern is one, three, three, five, five, three, one. And let's see if this can uh, minimize where our voice would normally crack. Here we go and breathe. Mm, 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 walking up.
harder to keep that kind of creaky sound as we're getting higher. Let's try a couple more. If we were just singing, ah, uh, ah, uh, we'd probably be experiencing cracks all over the place. So even just the act of closing the mouth and singing on something partially closed, like a hum, mm, or a lip trill, which I love, that'll also help us to find uh, more of a balance between those chest voice muscles and head voice muscles. Um, another exercise we can try, which I also love, is sliding on an NG. And what I want you to feel is on the bottom, you're gonna really feel a lot of chest voice, you know, vibration. Mm, mm. And then as we ascend, what you wanna feel for is this gradual shift to your mouth and your head being where you sense more of that vibration. I know this is a little bit like in the woo-woo <laughs> territory, um, but try this with me. Again, we're gonna start kind of low, but all in the same octave. So we're gonna start on F sharp. Mm. We're sliding a perfect fifth, so those pitches are F sharp, C sharp, F sharp. That's another thing to help our vocal cracks is sliding. If you just jump, if you go, ah, uh, there's no way to bridge the gap. If you slide, ah, uh, it's giving those muscles a chance to work together for your chest voice muscles to relax a little bit and your head voice muscles to engage. So make sure you are sliding and not just going, ah, uh, okay, we're going, Ah, uh, but we're doing that on an ng, ng, like the end of the word sing. Here we go, F sharp to C sharp. Take a breath and sing with me. Mm. Feel that vibration kind of lifting out of your chest and more into your head, mouth, nose. Keep going. Now, if I don't let the sound lighten, it, it'll sound like this. I'll go, mm, and I feel a lot of sensation in my throat. I feel like the sound is getting heavy and I'm pushing. Um, so that's not what we're going for. That's gonna cause cracking. So let your sound get just a little bit softer, a little bit lighter. Maybe think about it as getting a little nasal. Mm, Okay, here we are, we're at A flat, E flat. Take a breath and sing. Mm -hmm. Keep going. Mm -hmm. Follow that sensation. You should be feeling it lift away from the chest, away from the throat. So you're not mm -hmm. pushing. Here you go. I'm experiencing a little vocal crack there. Mm -hmm. Ooh, but not that time. So I love this exercise because uh, oh, I just love it. <laughs> Keep going with me. Here we are. Mm -hmm. That one I feel like I'm pushing a little bit. Let's see if I can lighten into more of a head voicey zone. <laughs> so this is a uh, this is patient work. It's slow work, um, but it's a lot easier to find that balance of chest voice or speaking voice and head voice on something closed as opposed to just an awe 
Um, so NG I also love. And then another really, really great exercise to build coordination between your chest and head voice muscles are uh, bratty sounds, singing on like a nay or no or nah. And students always shy away from this. They don't want to sound ugly, but I promise you it's helpful. <laughs> so let's sing on this bratty sound. Let's go nay, 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 nay. Starting on F3. And then F4 is our high note. Um, I'll, I'll actually start you a little bit lower for those low voices, tenors and basses or baritones. <laughs> Okay, uh, start on D3 for me. I can't sing this low, but I will play it for you. Really, really bratty, nasal. Don't make it sound pretty, please. Here we go. Nay, 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 nay. Nay, 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 nay. That's how ugly it should be. Nay, 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 nay. Now we're at F. Nay, 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 nay. And yes, scrunching your face helps. Nay, 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 nay. Nay, 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 nay. So you'll notice, pausing here, we're singing G to G. Um, you'll notice that the sound is lighter or thinner kind of use those terms interchangeably um, when we're singing on this bratty sound than it would be if we were just singing on ah, uh, where we have a tendency to push or, you know, over muscle those high notes. Nay, 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 nay. We're mixing now instead of just using chest voice. Uh, but we're not flipping either. We're not going nay, 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 nay. We're keeping it nicely connected. Um, it is okay if you still crack on these exercises, um, but over time using these in your warm up will help you to, again, find that balance between your chest voice and your head voice function. Okay, so yes, here we go. Uh, jumping back in at G to G. Ugly, bratty, nay. Here you go. Nay, 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 nay. 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 Now, I know my voice well enough to know it wants to crack about here. <laughs> so we'll talk about anticipating cracks shortly. Um, okay. Uh, second, second cause that we talked about. So the first was lack of coordination between your TA and CT muscles. And the way to fix that is over time to develop more of a balance between those, what would be opposing muscle groups. Um, and then the second main cause is too much weight, too much muscle at the vocal folds. Um, so developing that mixed coordination or balance will help to correct that. Um, but other things that you can try are using less volume first. So if you are going, uh, I'll start a little bit lower. If you're going, ah, uh, and then it's causing you to crack, you might dial back your volume. Ah, 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 instead of pushing for this really, really loud, heavy, chesty sound. Um, another thing that you can try if you find that you're over muscling or kind of pushing and straining and then cracking is making sure that you are letting some air flow. Um, if you're really, really muscled up to hold your air back, again, it, it's going to crack eventually. Um, so singing on something like a zaw or shaw, um, something where there's a consonant with airflow. So zzz, you can feel that air flowing as opposed to b which is holding the air back. Um, so you could sing za, 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 or va, 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 and really feeling that air flowing on those, those consonants. Um, and then the last thing that you might do is narrow your vowels. So if you find that you are straining and then cracking, uh, listen to the difference between 
and I'm not in danger of cracking when I narrowed that vowel. I was in danger of cracking on that super wide That's a chesty mix as opposed to purely heavy chest voice. Um, so let's talk more about vowel modification because this goes both ways. If our vowels are too closed on a high note, we're in danger of cracking because on a closed vowel, your voice wants to go to head voice. That's why we go woohoo instead of yay, hey. <laughs> Um, we go woo or wee because it's easy for our voice to sing high in head voice on a closed vowel. Um, if you're singing a vowel like the word you and it's on a high note for you and you find that you're cracking, like you're going you, you, or you're straining, cracking, um, opening up that vowel just a little bit, you you can help you find balance. So that's ooh with a little bit of uh in it. Um, by the same token, if your vowel is too wide, which I demonstrated before, if you're going yeah or yeah, that's what happens. Yeah, ouch. Um, whereas if you narrow that ah vowel into uh, uh. You can hear some more mix quality or head voice tone come in just by narrowing that vowel. Um, this is a huge, huge thing for you to remember because our tendency is to go wide when we sing high because that's how we shout. We go, hey, hey. We don't go, hey, guys. No. Um, but if you're singing, you're not shouting. You can't shout. Uh, you have to sustain those notes. So in order to do that in a balanced way, if your, if your vowel is super, super wide, narrow it in. So the general rule of thumb is start with an a uh vowel and then move toward the vowel that you're actually supposed to be singing. Or you could start with the vowel you're supposed to be singing and then move it toward a. Uh. Uh is our medium or neutral vowel, and typically it, it works pretty well, like regardless of the range you're singing in, um, and it works especially well if you're trying to find this mix or balance. Um, so if you're cracking on a vowel that's very closed or very open, modify toward uh. Um, those videos that I mentioned before, those shorter lessons here on YouTube, um, see the video description because they, there's one on narrow vowel modification and one on wide vowel modification. So that'll give you even more practice on, on this. Um, uh, one last thing to leave you with is that it's more about the perception of the vowel than the actual vowel. So if you sing you, you, your audience will accept that you're saying you, even though you're not. You're saying yo, yo. Um, I know it's weird, but trust me, we're used to it as listeners. We're just not used to it as singers. Um, so if you think about singers, like any singer saying the word baby, they typically aren't going baby, they're going baby. And do we say baby in real life? No, but we sing baby because it sounds better. Um, so it's your prerogative as a singer to modify vowels to make them easier to sing and, and to help you out registration wise so that you don't crack. <laughs> um, so let's do just a little bit of practice with this. Um, again, the principle is start with a uh and move toward the vowel in question or start with the vowel in question and move toward a. Uh. So let's say I'm singing, um, let's do a lower example for the tenors, berries, and basses. 
Let's have you guys sing an F4. That should be high enough where like your voice kind of wants to crack. So this is the pitch. F4, not F3. Not that one. That one's gonna be easy for you and you're not in danger of cracking. But this one, hey, okay. So let's pretend you're singing a song and you have to say you or me. Either one. Let's do you just to unify. So you're singing the word you. Tell me what happens, low voices, when you sing this F4 on a really closed you. Are you cracking? Are you able to get it? Are you flipping to head voice immediately? Are you going you? The exercise is pretend you want to sing that in like a chest voice sound or like a chesty mix. And what, what happens? It might not be high enough for some of you. Some of you may be like, I've worked on this, I'm good. Um, however, if you're cracking or you're flipping immediately to head voice, Okay, so Carboplox is saying something like that. I crack, but a little. Um, so if that's you, if you're cracking, or maybe if you try, you know, a G, surely some people are cracking on a G. An A, I can guarantee someone's cracking right now. <laughs> so if that's you, pick a pitch, one of these. Um, singing instead of you, first sing ya. Yeah. Hopefully that's easier for you. If you're still cracking on that, sing on bub, bub, or na, na. Something with more of a, a consonant. Okay? Now, see if you can find the middle ground between ya and you. So it sounds enough like you're singing you. Something like, you, you. It does not look like I'm singing you, but it sounds enough like it to be passable. And Carboplox is saying, hey, I don't crack with the, yeah, cool. So if you don't crack on a, uh, the a uh is helping you. So we want to retain a lot of that uh feeling in your throat and shape in your mouth. Uh, that can also be how you modify toward you. Um, I think that's the best way to do it. You could go the opposite way. So you go, you could go to you and open up. But I think start with what helps you. Start with the uh and then move to the vowel in question. Okay, cool. On to the next tip. The next tip is consonant substitution to avoid cracks. Um, so this is especially helpful if you're jumping to a high note and you're cracking on that high note and the initial sound on the lyric is unvoiced. So examples of unvoiced sounds would be k or p or s. By unvoiced, I mean the vocal folds do not have to vibrate in order to make that sound. So there's no tone. There's no pitch. It's just noise. It's just airflow and something that you're doing with your mouth to make that noise. Any of those unvoiced consonants. So if you're jumping, you're going to a high note and you're saying something like, I don't care, and you're flipping or cracking on, I don't care, and you cannot, can't get that. Um, the tip is to substitute the unvoiced consonant with a voiced consonant that's similar. Um, so I actually have this written out in that other video. So I have a whole video on this topic, on consonant substitution. Um, and if you open up that video, I should have put it in this one, sorry. Uh, but if you open up that video, in the video description, there's a list. So a K 
or a C, you can swap out for a G. I don't care becomes I don't care. And I know it sounds silly right now, but I promise you it will save your butt when you're singing and you're cracking and you're like, oh wow, thank you Camille. <laughs> and actually I need to pass the thanks along one of my voice teachers, uh, his name's Gerald White, uh, he introduced me to this tip. So I have to, have to give him props. Okay, I'm going down the list. So K or C, try a G instead. F, try a V instead. So for fine, fine, vine, instead of fine. Okay, um, reading a comment real quick. So Faye is saying, I don't crack, but I'm a mezzo. So Faye, you might try that same thing up in our kind of crack zone, which would be like B flat, B, C. So try the same thing. Um, Mark is saying for F4, I have to go into head voice. Okay, so fair enough, Mark. You might try that same thing down on like a D4, maybe D flat four. Somewhere a little bit lower, wherever that spot in your voice is where you're kind of in danger of cracking, um, that's where you can try out this vowel modification business, um, starting with uh and then moving to the vowel in question. Um, and perhaps you want to even start lower. You can try, uh, first try it out in an area of your voice where you're not in danger of cracking. So you could all the way down here, you, yo, you kind of get that vowel solid and then go to the higher pitch. That's another thing I'd do. Um, okay, and then last question before jumping back into these consonant substitutions. Um, the Joker is asking, uh, I've been watching a lot of your videos and they've helped, but my voice is heavy. So if your voice is heavy, um, vocalize on narrow vowels like an oo oo um, and then of course use something that's partially closed like a hum, an n, an ng, or a lip trill. It's very difficult to over muscle on narrow vowels and semi-closed uh, exercises. So if you sing on an mm, your voice will more naturally lighten and go into head voice. You're not gonna go mmm. It, it just won't happen. Um, okay, and then Moonlight is saying it works for me now, but how can I learn to adapt it to songs when I sing? So what we're doing is any tricky, um, either we're talking about vowel modification or consonant substitution, um, any lyric that contains a vowel that is too narrow or too wide, you'll start with a uh, and then move to whatever vowel you're supposed to be singing. And then same thing with the whole consonant substitution. So let me let me keep going down this list. Um, so if you have the word fine, add a little bit of V, sing vine. If you have a word starting with an H, like her, and you're cracking, this one's kind of weird. Instead of her, say er. Her, er. Again, it's a weird one, but if you're cracking, you know, think about it this way. A crack is way more noticeable to your audience than some consonant substitution here and there or some vowel modification. Um, okay, keep keep going down the list. If you have a word starting with a p and you're cracking, you're going pie. <laughs> Let's say you're singing about pie. Um, add a little bit of b sound. Compare the two. B, B. Your vocal folds are active for the B, B, not for the P, P. That's just air. Pie. I'm cracking. Bye. Yay, I'm not cracking anymore. Um, S sound. S. Add a little bit of Z. And by the way, I use this with my private students often. Um, t sound. Add a little D. T, D. TH sound, same thing. There, there, add a little bit of D. There, if you need it. And then last one, SH, share, 
add a little zh, share. And I know it sounds super obvious right now, like out of context, but if you put it in a song, I promise most people are not going to notice. Um, okay, so the next tip, anticipating cracks before they occur. Um, this is something that happens with time. I, I promise it will. Um, so let's do this like on a vocal warm up, for example, and pretend it's a song that we're singing. So we're going da 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 da, and I feel like my voice is gonna crack on da 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 da. What an advanced or experienced singer will do that a beginning singer just doesn't know to do is they'll shift registers to disguise the crack. So instead of going da 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 and cracking, they'll just sneak into their next register, either mix or head voice, before they get there. They'll go da 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 and it's fine. Da 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 Maybe it's not the sound that you're going for, but is it better than cracking? If we're singing a song in front of people, yeah, it's better than cracking. <laughs> um, so another option that you have, uh, that's the first option is to kind of shift registers. If you anticipate, ooh, I don't think I'm gonna hit that. Let me allow my voice to flip into head voice for that. This is kind of like we're talking about a performance situation. We're not necessarily talking about a you're just warming up because um, I don't really care so much about war cracking during warmups. But let's say you're singing a song and you're going da 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 and you want to go da 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 but you don't feel like you're going to make it. Um, first option, let your voice shift da 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 and be like, I'm just gonna do that in mix or head voice and whatever. Second option would be that you leave that note early. So instead of da 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 and risking cracking, you hit the note da da da, but you know when to leave. Cause that's another thing is we often will crack on sustains. Um, sometimes you're able to hit the note Da, da, da. You're just not able to hold it. Da, da, da. And that's another thing an experienced singer will know is how long can I hold this note before I crack or before I'm in danger of cracking? So those are your options for anticipating when you can anticipate. Mm, I think I'm going to crack. Flip to head voice or mix, whatever or touch the note, but don't hold it out. I see that happening a lot with some of my beginning students. They're just like holding on to this note for dear life. And uh, anyways, um, so a way to work towards sustains would be um, with repeats. So if you're singing something like a da 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 and you wanna hold out that note, first step is just to touch the note. Da, da, da. You can even let your voice fall off of it. Da, da, da. Da. Next step would be to repeat. Da, 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 da. And fall off of it. Then once you're comfortable with that, da, da, da. And then get off of it. So we're working toward it gradually. It's not easy to sustain a high note. It's not. Um, anyways, okay, I digress. Um, gonna look at the comments really quick. Mark was saying D4 is high chest voice, D sharp four is mix, um, and so on. And then, uh, the Joker is asking how to fix a stuck jaw. I like that question. Um, I want to get to it shortly. If you don't mind, if you don't mind sticking around, um, let's 
we'll wrap up cracking and then we'll get to technique questions. Um, so the last 15 minutes are just for Q&A. Excited about that. Um, but let's talk quickly about intentional cracks for stylistic effect. Um, so someone earlier, way, way, way at the beginning, Azelda mentioned uh, some intentional voice cracks in Zombie by the Cranberries. So if you haven't heard that song, it's such a good one. But it's uh, something like, um, in your head, in your head, zombie, zombie, zombie. And there's intentional cracking there. And it's, oh, it's just iconic. So another uh, current example of intentional vocal cracking is in Justin Bieber's song with Benny Blanco, Lonely. He goes, lonely. I just posted a TikTok about this, so I know what the pitches are and all. <laughs> so I can help you with this song. Um, another example is in Yellow by Coldplay. They sing, um, Look at the stars, look how they shine for you and everything you do. He's cracking all over the place, but it sounds so good. It's intentional. So again, what is cracking? We're going abruptly from a chest function, hey, to head function, he, hey, hey, hey. It's kind of like a yodel. Same thing, it's just happening slower. Um, so if you are interested in this, it's super, super popular in pop music uh, currently. So if you wanna try it, um, I recommend training over a wide range to start out. Uh, for example, that Lonely song we'll get to, but it's not over a wide range, it's D to F sharp. And for a lot of people, that's just too narrow to start. So let's try in a range that most people will be able to do. Um, let's flip from G3 to G4. So we're going to say, hey, and then we're going to say, whoo, an octave higher. So hey on G3, whoo on G4. Don't stay in chest voice. Make it super light and airy on the top. Hey, ooh. We're not connecting them at all yet. Hey, ooh. Memorize that sensation, that placement. Hey, ooh. Ooh, and Moonlight is telling me uh, Aurora Runaway had that too. I'm trying to think of that song. And I was running far away, would I run off the world someday, nobody knows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. And see you later, Carboplux22. <laughs> okay, so we're disconnected. Hey. Ooh. Now let's connect them, but keep saying hey who. Hey who. Again. Hey who. Okay, last step, get rid of the H. So instead of saying, hey, who? Say, hey, who? Hey, who? Hey, who? And most people can feel the sensation of that, like, muscle switching over. Hey, who? Hey, who? You feel it happen. Okay, last thing would be just on hey. Hey, hey, or hoo, hoo. Tell me how it's going. I don't expect, if you've never tried this technique before, I don't expect it to click totally today, but at least I want to get you started with it. Um, I would say as well another tip is to find your head voice first, if that's what's trickiest for you. So instead of going, hey, and then whoo, you might flip that around. You might go, whoo, hey, whoo, hey, whoo, hey, whoo. 
as another means of getting at it. Okay, um, so let me know in, hello, Shem. Um, I think let's, let's try this lonely thing, because why not? Just a couple Ooh. minutes. Um, so this flip is happening between D and F sharp. And we're going low. It's okay if you're just going low, low, and you're holding on to chest voice. But see if you can let go, let go of that tension. Low, low. And the Joker is saying, I don't understand D4, F4, these kind of things. Let me help you. Um, I give the pitches for anyone who understands that, but I also think it's really important uh, for you to start to understand this. So go to virtualpiano.net with me. So open up in a new tab. Mine tells me that my browser is blocking it and I just say close this. So you should have a keyboard that you're looking at in front of you but it doesn't have any letter names on it and we need letter names. So click key assist. It's on the keyboard. So you'll see record, key assist, metronome, sound, style, save, key assist. And then if you see no labels, click that. So it should toggle to on. And now you have this beautiful keyboard with pitches with pitch letter names and octave numbers and I want you to look at this with me because you'll see these pitch letter names repeat there's only seven letters in the musical alphabet we go from a to g and then we repeat again so take a look you'll see a b c d e f g a b c d e f g but what what changes is the octave number so you have c2 d2 e2 all the way and then when you get to the next C, C3, D3, E3, and so on. So now you can click D4 and that's the pitch that you should be hearing. And then click F sharp 4. Notice that's the black key directly to the right of F4, F sharp 4. So this little flip happens from D4 to F sharp 4. Oh, oh, oh. That whole business is lonely. I would say it's advanced to be able to do that all today, but just to get you started on that first flip from oh, chest voice or speaking voice on the O, O, and then head voice really, really light on O, 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 sing O, O, and now see if you can drop that H sound and just sing O, 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 and if you're getting that little yodel sound, that intentional voice crack, then yay! If it's not coming today, that's okay. It does take a bit of time to learn. I will put in here um, a lesson or two on this technique, this intentional voice crack. So we are coming to the end here of voice crack time. <laughs> so tell me what questions you have. It could be related to this or it could be anything vocal technique. Um, the Joker, I'm going to answer your question about how to fix a stuck jaw. But any other questions, please let me know. So this is a pop flip lesson from my channel. You can check that out. And I really love this technique. So here's another. Number two. 
if you're like, I want to learn how to do that. Okay, so the Joker gaming, how to fix a stuck jaw. Um, one newer tip that I've learned, which is really interesting, is to take your fingers, or other people have done this with like wine corks, and stick them between your back teeth. Ah, and to vocalize like that. Wash your hands first, or get clean wine corks, I guess. Ah, 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 ah. And you should feel that these muscles are disengaged. They are, they stay soft as you're vocalizing. So that's kind of a weird one, but I like it. It's it's working for me. Um, another not new trick, and really it's not a trick, but it's just to move your jaw when you're singing. So if you find that you're going ah uh, and your jaw is staying stuck in one one spot, sing on a syllable that requires you to move your jaw. Something like mum 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 or ba 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 mum 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 <clears throat> you can't say mum <laughs> without moving your jaw i'm trying to you can't because your lips have to come together to make the m sound mum 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 you can also just speak mum 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 However much your jaw is moving to speak, mum, 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 no, 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 no. When you go back to singing, make sure that your mouth and jaw are moving just as much if your jaw is stuck. I hope that helps. What other questions do you have? I'm going to go back and see if there were any that I missed from last time. Um... Well, this is, I know that Carboplox22 already left, but they said sometimes I break or crack on purpose. Sometimes it comes naturally to me. I don't know if it's okay. Yeah, if it's on purpose, it's good. My number one thing for singers is just that you're in control. Um, so if you are in control of what's happening, that's good. That's, that's a good sign. Any other questions? I'm gonna take a drink of water. Give you give you time to think. Good questions. Thank you, um, Aselda, Camille. I get out of breath too quick quickly when I do song work and how even should my song work be structured? Zelda, I got you. Um, I need to find this article real quick, but I did write an article on how to structure your song work, so I want to share that with you. Um, here you go, Zelda. Oh, actually, I'll just title it. I'll title it song work article. There you go. Okay. And, at, but you're asking specifically about running out of breath. So Azelda, I was thinking about this earlier today because I get this question a lot. And um, what I would do first is hiss or shh on the melody. So let's say you're singing, hmm. I'm trying to think of a song that's really challenging breath-wise. I'm just going to do the national anthem for right now. So if you're singing, you know, Oh, say can you see? And I know, Zelda, this is not your national anthem, but it's okay. <laughs> just as an example. Instead of singing, you're going to breathe. And determine what works best for you in terms of your belly gently pushing out when you sing or gently and slowly pulling in. So determine what works best and then feel that belly working when you're hissing or shing. Next, feel your, feel your belly working. I'm going to turn off this keyboard so I don't keep hitting it. 
on a z or v. Z or Feel how much your belly is working. Then you can go back to lyrics, but keep your belly working. Don't give up even even though you're not on something as supportive. Oh, say. So I want my belly to feel just as engaged as it was on the hiss or the shh or the v. Oh, say, can you see? Now my belly's working to support me and to help me hold back that air. Um, Mark is saying, you mentioned a few songs where singers crack on purpose. The only one I recognized was Yellow, but I struggle to tell the difference between them cracking into head voice and just going up normally. So Mark, I would say um, a lot of times it's it's going to be lighter, breathier, um, and the singer will kind of try to make it obvious. So take a listen to that song, Lonely, because uh, that one's super, super obvious. It's like, a straight up yodel. Um, not every time that a singer is singing higher are they cracking. So they might be going da da da, and that's a register shift, but it's not a da da. That's an intentional flip or crack. Um, so in order for that crack to happen, it it has to be on the same syllable or or the same word. Hey. Instead of, hey, no, that's a register shift, but it's not a an intentional crack because we're not hearing that, hey, that kind of yodel sound. I hope that helps. So listen for that kind of obvious yodely sound on the same syllable or the same lyric. Um, Bop is asking for a minor key warm up. Bop. I've got to put that on my list because it's a really good idea. Um, let me add it to my notes right now so that I don't forget. Thank you for that. Okay, minor key warm up. I'll do it. Um, and then Eddie was asking if my voice feels tired after I practice, that does it mean that I'm doing it wrong or just over practicing? Because during the practice, I don't have any problem, but after an hour or so, I start to ache. Eddie, that might be a longer practice session than you really need or are ready for. I don't know because I don't know, know you or your voice, um, but if you are feeling tired, uh, specifically, you know, feeling in pain, um, then you might be overdoing it. If nothing in particular is causing you pain, that's a good thing. So I would say it might just be too much time. Um, you're, most people can sing for 30 minutes to an hour a day, um, but you might have to break it up, especially if you're doing something that is <clears throat> just vocally more taxing. Take breaks. Um, if you're singing... Yeah, if you're stretching your range, if you're working on sustains, if you're singing at a high volume, work for a couple minutes, take a minute rest. Work for a couple minutes or or even longer rest. So work for 10 minutes, rest, come back later. Um, see see if that helps you. Um, and Yelitsa Bith is saying, what if my voice cracks a lot while I'm singing? So all of the tips that we talked about today, um, developing mix coordination, um, using consonants to your advantage, using closed exercises like that NG, um, all of those will help you. Yeah. Um, Aaron is talking about whistle voice and ooh is saying that that inhale thing doesn't work for him. <laughs> um, Aaron, I don't, I don't have a better way. Unfortunately, I don't access my whistle register like ever. <laughs> and I'm not sure if I, if I really have, if I really have it. Uh, not, not every singer does. Um, so yeah, it's, it's been a while since I've even tried. I, I don't teach it because I don't do it. I can't teach something that I don't do. So unfortunately, I'm not the expert on this. Um, I'm, I'm interested to see what the, uh, what the rest of the YouTube 
singing teacher world have to say. I think I recommended the New York vocal coaching tutorial to you, but I know he does start with the inhale phonation. Um, mm, yeah, I'm sorry. Sorry about that. Uh, okay, Elizabeth is saying, why when I say C, my voice cracks and I can't hear myself. I don't know. I don't know why you can't hear yourself. Um, but you might want to modify that E vowel to more of an E rather than E, which might be too narrow, too closed. Moonlight, sometimes I can reach higher notes than usual male voices with my head voice. Sometimes I can reach to female singers' head voices. I wonder if it's dangerous. So there is a lot of crossover between uh, high and low voices lots of crossover. So turn my keyboard back on. Um, this pitch, I'm going to play a C5. That's in my range as an alto. It's in a soprano's range. It's also in a tenor's range. All of those notes that you might be able to access in your head voice. So as long as it's not hurting you, it is probably not dangerous because um, again, there's a lot of crossover between high and low ranges. Um, and let's see. Faye is saying, I've just started singing again after 20 years. Uh, my voice isn't cracking, but I'm finding it hard to get my range back. Yeah, Faye, that is going to take some time. Um, it be patient, give yourself a break, like be kind to yourself. Um, I think I've shared this before. I had bad bronchitis. This was years ago. This was like in college, but I had a really intense cough and it took me so long to get my head voice back. It was so discouraging. So Faye, I am with you. I understand what you're going through. Um, it, it takes time. Remember, your best friends are going to be semi-occluded exercises, singing through a straw, lip trills, NG, gentle stuff, um, and, and just taking it day by day. Um, mm, and then Azelda's asking, by engaged, you might, do you mean my abs should contract? Uh, yes. So Azelda either feeling that contraction with this gentle pulling in motion with your low tummy or this gentle pushing out motion. Either way, whatever works for you. Um, the Joker is asking, how does a straw help with your singing? So a straw, uh, basically it balances the air. So you have air under your vocal folds that's coming up from your lungs. Your vocal folds are vibrating and then your sound wave is created, bounces around, and that's that's the sound that we hear. Um, but there's a lot of air below the folds. What the straw does is it reflects some air back above the vocal folds to help balance it out, physics. And, uh, and that makes it easier for your vocal folds to vibrate and stretch out. Um, they have to work less hard just to hold that air back. Um, it also elongates your resonant tube, which does cool things from a resonance perspective, but generally it makes it easier for your voice to vibrate. That's the short answer. Um, okay, and then Azelda is asking, ooh, I gotta wrap up. Azelda's asking, I noticed the higher I sang falsetto, the sound started disappearing. Am I on the right track? So Azelda, if the sound disappears, let's say you're going like this. Ooh, ooh, it's just air on top. That's not inherently dangerous. I would say instead of continuing though, instead of going ooh, 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 what you might want to try is try something semi-closed. So try that same thing on an NG. Okay, my voice is holding together. Let me stay with that. But at a certain point, kind of breaking up. I, and I've reached past my limit. That That is not within my vocal range. Um, will it hurt me to keep trying? Nah. 
it probably won't. Um, but do see if there's another configuration for you that's easier for your voice to come together. Okay. And um, last question to Precious. How many minutes should you do vocal warm-ups? I usually say about 10 minutes is good. Um, you don't need to be warming up for an hour. 10 minute warm-up, 15 tops, get to singing, do some song work. And how many breaks should you take? That is up to you, the stuff that you're working on and what you're feeling in the moment. So that's the funny thing about our voices. We might be like a machine one day and the next day, oh, so sensitive. And, you know, maybe you're tired. Maybe you're fighting off illness. Um, so listen to your body. If you're feeling fatigued, if you're feeling tired, take a break. Okay, awesome. I'm not even sure what next week's topic is. I know it's chosen and I know it's up. Uh, oh, I remember. It's how to increase power in your singing voice. That'll be a fun one. Um, all right, guys. Thank you so much. If you came late, you can watch the video in its entirety. Um, it just takes a little while to process. But I will see you next week. Same time, same place. Thank you for being here. Bye.